Remember that crazy Dark Knight climax scene where Batman uses ultrasonic technology? A high frequency generator receiver. You took my sonar concept and applied it to every phone in the city. Yeah, this one. What if that is coming to reality soon? I had a talk with this uh, company called Sonarax at MWC and they had something really really interesting to show as a demo. they want to come to india and show us that it is possible to do payments or indoor positioning or a wide range of use cases with ultrasonic technology and that's what this video is all about it's a kind of a sit down interview and uh, definitely do watch it and let me know what you think in the comment section below don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like this video we'll see you in the next one so let's get on with the interview real real cool we have a communication protocol okay which is built out of the most fundamental components it is built on sound waves so actually any device we have the largest install base yeah potential in the world because any device that has either a microphone or a speaker can participate in the game and the device could be a mobile phone but it also can be a television it could be one of these it could be one of these speakers anything any device in the world that is equipped with a microphone or a speaker can be used to transfer data between these devices on sound waves beyond the human hearing range which is ultrasonic so this is the basic of what we do and it is a communication protocol which is a uh, very very simple to implement it can integrate over any application that is developed over any kind of operating system and in that way it could be used for a variety of use cases so let me give you some examples first example i want to give you is very very simple payment yeah so today there is a direct link and in india it's even more obvious because of the rbi regulations for yeah. second factor authentication yeah, exactly. today you want for instance to log into a secure website or to do you need to put a username and you need to put a password and then you get a text yeah. and yeah. you need to put the text yeah. Yeah. so the more secure you are the worse is the customer experience yes we break this link why because we can make machines talk to each other so for an example i can have a specific website shout from the speaker of the computer hey benny phone are you here and my phone I will identify with one factor and it will identify that I am present in front of it and the user experience will be completely smooth and I still have verification of presence. This can happen not only in front of a television, it can happen between devices, wallet to wallet. It could happen in front of an ATM machine or any other device because sound travels between any other device. On ATMs you have speakers because when you click them yeah, they beep, can, right? Yeah, they beep, yeah. So this is good enough for us so this is one example the other example that i want to give you is as for us every speaker is a beacon for indoor position okay so so look at one very simple thing is like this is a map of a museum that we are installed at and all you need to do in this case is uh, i will just turn Bluetooth mode. TF mode. This speaker on, and you will see that I'm here. Okay. Very simple, right? And so for positioning, it's wonderful. You don't need to deploy a lot of hardware, and it can just work. Other things that you can do with this are anything to do with machine-to-machine -machine connectivity. For an example, I can have today. a uh, smart home yeah, yeah. and everything oh, yeah. in the smart home will work and it will be on wifi but i want to change my wifi password the entire home stops They're working yeah exactly and what if all you need to do is to have the controller shout at all the devices hey change the password to this and that then everything will work right yeah now look just very very simple about what i'm showing you on this one this one for example this is like a smart home and i have my smart watch and i can just click my smartwatch and do this and this is all ultrasonic there is no connectivity here so i can take this phone right now put it in airplane mode and it will and still, still transfer work. information okay. now imagine what happens when you are on the ground and you want to find your car 
or imagine what will happen when you are going on a cruise on a boat and your phone doesn't work and you want to communicate and what happens when you're in an airplane on airplane mode and you need to receive information or when you are in a sports stadium watching for an example a cricket match in India and then something interesting is happening on the game and from the speakers ultrasonically we can play information. This player is out, this one is in, and everybody on the phone we'll will get, get it without any need for pairing or connectivity. So you have a wonderful communication protocol that is using the most fundamental thing, yeah. sound. And sound always works. And it works between any device to any other device. And this is what we have. Okay. So how so, secure is that? As secure as you want it to be, for okay. you can take any data, encrypted data, okay. put it on one side. We will make, like, we will make what we call the music of data out of this. Okay. Play it, and you will get it on the other side, encrypted in the same way without touching the encryption. You can have any level of security that you choose. On the other side, you can say, I don't want security. I have a, a use case that I want everybody to get it on broadcast and you will get it on broadcast. You can actually adjust it. It's like any other communication protocol. Okay. So why was it hard to make this before? What? I'm sorry? Because uh, I feel ultrasonic has been used around for a while, like generally for other use cases. Exactly. Why was it not used as a communication protocol before? I will tell you, there is a huge development effort in order to make this, because if you ask me for today for an example, what is unique about Sonorex when I look at old uh, protocols of this type, why isn't that is the case? It took us years to bring it to a level where the reliability level will be as strong as other communication protocols, where we will make what we have today, which is zero false positive, and the percentage of false negative is as little as other communication protocols. This is years of development and algorithm developments that sits there that make it work in loud environments like what you saw here, or in echo environment, or in areas where you have bad speakers, good speakers, good microphones, bad microphones. It works on pretty much anything that has a microphone and a speaker. Okay. And this is why it took so long. And this is why we're launching it right now, because now we know that this is as reliable as any other communication method. Okay. Great. So which uh, spectrum does it operate on? Is it unlicensed? We are working on an unlicensed uh, spectrum. We work on the high frequency range that the regular okay, speakers and microphones can yes. work. Yes. So it's beyond the human hearing range. It's uh, in kilohertz? Yes, in the, uh, in the high levels. We okay. work on 44? the edge. No, uh, I wish. We okay. can work on any high frequency, but this one does not go to 44, yeah, 44. it goes up to around 20, 20 yes, So yes. we are working on whatever the okay. spectrum will let us okay. in this case. Okay. And uh, most of the applications are going to be short range? Uh, I would say that it depends, because if we're talking about positioning, it can be longer range. Okay. If we're talking about authentication, we're asked to limit the range, because you want it to work yeah. only when you are... 20, 30 centimeter from an ATM or only when you are one meter from a point of sale or something like that. So just um, to show you a little example of how this thing is used today in uh, areas of payment is I'll uh, just um, sorry um, um, just close all this so I can show you look this is actually what you see here is a vending machine. This is a vending machine. It's just a user interface, but this is a vending machine. And I have here a mobile wallet. And I want this machine to trigger a transaction that I can pay here. So I select what I want to buy. And what this thing will do at the moment is this thing right now will just... Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I need to click first. <laughs> Just a second. Um, yeah, I'm clicking on uh, one of these. Transaction is triggered. This is ultrasonic, okay? Okay. And now I just authenticate on this one. And when the payment will be completed on this machine right now, then what will happen is that I'm now authorized in front of uh, the bank. And uh, that's it. Payment is complete. I can get the goods. And this is ultrasonic. 
No need to install NFC machines here. No need to install. It's just by the speaker, the regular speaker in this case. So you make the uh, APIs for it for others to develop? Yes, we are. We have um, a software development key uh, kit that can work over any operating system that exists today, okay. starting from the basic uh, Android, iOS, Mac OS, Windows, Java, Linux based, but it is also embedded today already. And we can also support hardware infrastructure. For an example, this what you see here is a smart microphone manufactured by Nose. And our technology is running on this one. If you go to Cadence Book, you will see our technology already ported to Hi-Fi 3 audio processors. So it sits also as software on processors, okay. not only as a regular software development kit, both on the infrastructure and as a software development kit. Okay. So, but you never go to the range of mobile networks or something like that, right? We are staying within the audio range. We are working with audio. The advantage of sound is not only what I just told you. The other advantage is we do not induce any electromagnetic radiation. Okay. We don't work on radio frequencies. Right. We work only on audio frequencies. Okay. Does it impact battery by any chance phone battery? What? I'm sorry? Uh, the sound waves. Does it uh, impact the phone's battery life by any chance? No, right? It's like a music We are playing. using like anything else that you play. Like, like, a, like a 3G like, modem or... Like yeah. a ringtone, a, yeah. a call, okay. a, anything like that. We do not okay, okay. Uh, abuse the... the calls, it's yeah. not that much. Not that much. We do not abuse the, <laughs> the device, okay, of course. Okay. It doesn't require any extra processing or anything like that. No? The, the processing is very little. The memory consumption is very, very small. For an example, our entire libraries on this specific smart microphone is less than 160K. Oh, KB. That's very small, very effective, and very easy to implement. Okay. So what is going to be like, uh, are you going to approach uh, smartphone manufacturers to include something or? Uh... First of all, we are approaching today a lot of use cases that are on the software level. For an example, okay. all areas of payment, for example. So you have already have services. the hardware of it everywhere. Yes. And we also, uh, and so it's the regular hardware. Yeah. And the uh, areas that are related to indoor positioning in cases like this. On the other side, we're also talking to manufacturers because of the fact that we know how to run inside the processing wow. process. Okay, thank you so much. So, what do you think? Interesting? Yeah, yeah. very interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Cool, I think right? this could work. In a country like work. India, where the mobile network is not possible everywhere, there is one more thing which really, really is important to the Indian market is the fact that I don't need a smartphone. You can work also on legacy phone because our software development kit can also work on Java environments. Oh, okay. So we don't really care if you have an expensive phone or an old legacy phone. It will work because it has a microphone and a speaker, right? Okay, okay. yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah. Right. So are there uh, like uh, other use cases uh, with ultrasonic in the sense that uh, I, I just wish I knew why it took so long for this to happen. I think that... Um, Weren't other companies involved in such... Uh, oh yes, a lot of companies are trying to do things in the ultrasonic range. Right. Even big players like uh, Google and like, uh, they, they are trying. But I can tell you that it is not, a, you know, the simple basics of transferring data on sound. You probably know it from the days of the old modems. Yeah. Uh, Even the DMF was some form of a way, but to make something which is really a protocol that can take any data and pass it with getting exactly what you sent. Okay. With verification that it always okay. worked. Okay, this okay. is what took so long. Okay, okay. Designing that algorithm. Because having something which is not stable and does not work in the real world, it's a wonderful theory. Yeah. yeah, yeah, But yeah. what we do, we make practice out of this theory. Okay. Yeah, looking forward to seeing it in uh, markets like India. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so very much. much.